Oh, what's up guys? Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the top effects that you can add to post-process your images using the compositor. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, if you've ever gone through and rendered an image and forgotten to check the box for denoise, you know how frustrating that can be. Um, and obviously this image renders really quickly, but if you have a more complex image, you can be waiting a long time and then you can end up with this noise data in your image, right? So this is just kind of noisy. Okay, and so you can see how my rendered image has a bunch of noise in it. However, in order to fix that, instead of going back and re-rendering your image, you can use the render layers function inside of your uh, compositing node tree. You can do a shift A and you can add a denoise node. And so I'm gonna take that denoise node right here and I'm gonna add it in the middle between my render layers and my composite. And so notice how this comes in here and this will actually remove the noise from your rendered data. Now, a more accurate way to do this would be to go over into your into your view layer properties and you wanna make sure that you add the denoising data in here. And so I think you're gonna to wanna to go back and re-render when you add new data to this node right here. So let's go back and re-render our image. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you drag your denoising normal and your denoising albedo in here as well. And that's gonna give you an even better denoised result without you having to re-render your image. All right, so next up, we've got the ability to add glare to our image. So in this case, we're gonna do a shift A and we're gonna go down into the filter section. And specifically, we wanna focus on the glare function. So if I click on glare, I can click into my scene and I can bring my image into my glare function right here and I can use this in order to create multiple different kinds of glare, right? So you can click on the drop down, you can add ghosts, you can add streaks, you can add simple star. Um, so there's multiple different effects in here. And so you can use this to adjust the threshold, the fade. So you can use this in order to make your glare show up in your scene. Now, note that you can also go into your view layer properties and use the emission data. So if I scroll down to light and I click on emission, notice how that now shows up as an option on our first, um, on our render layers option over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna re-render this image so we can have that emission data. But in this case, what I could do is I've already got my image and I want that to go into my denoising node, but I'm gonna take my emission data and plug it into my glare right here. And then I'm gonna add a mix node. So I'm gonna type in mix, click on this right here. I'm gonna drag my image into my image like this. And in this case, I don't want mix, I want add. And so now what that's doing is that's allowing me to add the glare only where the emission is going on, right? So if I added these streaks, notice how those streaks are only gonna show up on the objects that are actually emitting light. So you can use this to kind of combine together your image and your emission if you want your emission to just come off of individual objects that are emitting light and not off of the rest of your image. All right, so next up is a fairly common effect that you might apply in like a Photoshop or something like that. And we're gonna use the uh, Barcelona Pavilion example model um, that comes with GeoScatter in order to do this. So if you look at this image right now, if you wanted to, you could adjust the brightness and contrast in here without adjusting your scene lighting. And so we wanna do a shift A and we wanna go down into the color settings and you wanna click on the option for brightness and contrast. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add that to our node tree. And so notice when we do that, that gives us a little slider in here where you can adjust exactly what it sounds like, the brightness and the contrast. So notice how, as I bring that brightness up, this image is going to get brighter and brighter. Now you wanna be a little bit careful with that because you can pretty easily make your image look kind of washed out, um, though you could combine that with the contrast setting. So say I was to bring this up, I could also bring my contrast up as well, or you could just adjust the contrast of your image using a slider as well. So notice how the contrast is gonna give you um, a very pronounced difference between your darks and your lights in your scene. So you can also take both of these in a negative direction. If you need to bring your brightness down, for example, notice how that's doing 
this. So those are really good for making those quick adjustments in here without having to re-render with um, different lighting settings. So in addition to brightness and contrast, we also have the ability to do color correction. And there's a bunch of different nodes in here for this. I'm not gonna talk too much about them specifically, but you can do a shift A and you can go into the color settings right here and you can adjust things like the RGB curves. And so if I bring the RGB curves in here, notice what you can do is you can adjust um, the RGB curves for different color values in your scenes. So for example, say that you have too many greens in your scene, you can adjust this curve to kind of reduce the amount of green. Now, um, color grading itself is kind of its own science. So um, I, I will definitely say that I'm not an expert in that field, but notice how you can adjust this to significantly change the look of your image in your scene. So you could use the RGB curves. There's also a great note in here for hue, saturation, and value, right? So if you take hue, saturation, and value, and I'm just gonna drag this across here, whoops like this, that's gonna do exactly what it sounds like, right? Um, you've probably done this in Photoshop if you do any kind of like post-processing or anything like that. You can adjust the saturation of your image using a saturation slider. So notice how as I bring this up, those colors start getting more saturated looking. Now you do wanna be a little bit careful with this, obviously. It's really easy to like oversaturate your images in your scene, um, but you can use this to make your colors more vibrant um, as well as adjusting the hue of the scene if you want to do that. So usually I don't do too much with the hue. Usually I might do a little bit with the saturation just to get a little bit of emphasis on some of the colors that are in here. But again, you just want to be kind of careful because oversaturating your image is going to make it look unrealistic. So another interesting note in here is the hue correct. And so if you take the hue correct, what that's gonna do is that's actually gonna allow you to adjust the hue of specific colors. So for example, if you want your blues to be a little bit more blue, notice I can take the blue in here and it's gonna kind of correct that and make specifically the blue in here um, bluer. So notice how as I drag this up, I'm getting more blue in here while it's not necessarily affecting the other colors that are in here. So I could do the same thing with like the green of the grass, right? If I just want to adjust the hue of the grass, Notice how I can use this in order to adjust this up or down in order to make that specific color more vibrant. So if you do wanna make like specific parts of your scenes pop like this, notice how you can use this hue correct value in order to do that. All right, so you can do color correction. You can also, if you want to, convert your image to a black and white image. And so you could do that just by doing a shift A and then adding an RGB to BW node. And so from there, you can take your render output right here and that's just gonna give you a value. But if you plug this value into your image like this, notice how that's gonna give you a grayscale black and white image. So you can use this in order to really quickly convert your image into black and white. And notice how that is going through your brightness and contrast node. So you can use that to add additional contrast to your image if you want to, giving you more ability to adjust the, the grayscale values in your black and white image. All right, so next up, we're gonna use this Sketchfab model, the Combat Steampunk Robot from Andre Malin. And um, in this case, we've got a nice little rendering right here. And what we wanna do is we wanna add an image over it, specifically something like a watermark. And so the way that we might do that is we might do like a shift A. And what we wanna do is we wanna add an image node. So I'm gonna do a shift A. And we're gonna look for image right here. And then there's options down at the bottom where you can open up an image. So let's say that we wanted to open up just like the Blender logo. And so what I wanna do is I wanna bring this image in and I wanna move it over this object right here. But if I was to just drag this in here, right, that's not going to work because it's just gonna replace our rendered image. So what we need to do is we need to use a node that allows us to put an object over top of another object, like stacking these together. And so in this case, we wanna do a shift A and we wanna look for an alpha over node. So if I bring the alpha over node, what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to stack two objects on top of each other. So I'm gonna take this image and I'm gonna put it on um, the bottom right here. 
and I'm going to take this image and put it on the top. And then I'm going to drag this over here. And so notice what that does is that's going to take this image and it's going to place it over top of the other image. And then from there, we can move it around using a transform node. So I'm going to do a shift A. I want to look for a transform right here. And what we want to do is we want to adjust the scale to make it a little smaller. So maybe like 0.5. Notice how that makes it half as big. And then you can adjust your X and Y values just by dragging or typing in values in here, right? So in this case, I'm gonna move this up about right here. And we're gonna move it over like this. And so that's how you can use the alpha over node in order to add an image on top of an object. Okay, so now let's say that we wanted to render this with a transparent background and then replace that background with a color. Well, what we can do is we can go back into our layout view and we want to go into our render properties and our cycle settings and we want to toggle on the option for transparent, which could be or should be under the film option. And so I'm going to click on the option for transparent and what you're going to notice is this background goes to a transparent material, um, meaning that we can use that in the compositor in a minute. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this floor and I'm just going to change it to a shadow catcher because all I want it to do is catch the shadows, not show up as this big like flat plane in here. So we're actually going to go under the, uh, we're going to go under the visualize options and check the box for shadow catcher mask. But now we're going to jump over into the compositor. And so the first thing we need to do in the compositor is we need to re-render our image. So now, say that you wanted to add a color background to this scene. Well, what we can do is we can go back into our compositor like this, and notice how you may need to toggle backdrop on and off right here in order to get this to update. But what I can do is I can take this image and I can add a mix node. And so when I do this, I'm just going to do a shift A, I'm gonna look for mix. When I do a mix, we want our image to actually go in this bottom. And I'm going to disconnect um, this node right here. And so then what I wanna do is I wanna adjust the color right here. Notice how it's not doing anything yet. The first thing we wanna do is drag our alpha value into the factor right here. Then, once we've done that, now you can see that this is replacing that transparent background with a color right here. So you can use that transparency in the background along with a color um, in order to replace your normal background with a colored background in your image. Okay, and so what this is doing is this is giving us like a solid color in the background. But let's say that we didn't want that. What we want instead is we want more of a gradient background. And so the way that you can do this is you can do this using masks. And so let's say, for example, that we were to do a shift A and we wanna add a mask. And in this case, we're gonna look for an ellipse mask right here. And this is one place where that viewer node can be helpful. So I'm just gonna drag a value out of here. Or we're just gonna add a viewer node right here, and we're gonna to toggle this background on just because we wanna see what this is doing. And so notice what this is doing is this is creating an ellipse in your 3D space. And you can adjust the X value, which is the location, as well as some other things like the width and the height of this ellipse, right? So I can make this, use this to make like an oval. Um, I can basically use this to create a shape in Blender. And so what we wanna do is we wanna use this ellipse mask um, to mask out the colors in some location. All right, and so now we've got this circle, but we kinda of wanna blur the edges on this circle a little bit, right? So the way that we can do that is we can just do a Shift A and just add a blur node like this. So I'm just gonna add this blur node and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run these nodes just like this. And so notice what that does is nothing right now, um, but what we need to do is we need to adjust the X and the Y values. And notice how when I adjust the X and the Y values like this, notice how those edges start getting kind of fuzzy, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and bring the size down on this for a minute, just so we can see it a little better. Um, 
But notice how we've got the fuzzy edges in here like this. And so what we want to do is we want to use this as our, uh, we want to use this in order to create our uh, colors in the background, right? And you can create a lot of different kinds of masks. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag this into my image over here. Well, notice how all that does is it just gives you this kind of like black and white image in here, which is not really what you want, though we can use this to go ahead and come in here and make this a little bit bigger so that it fits with our image. And remember that you can like move this to the left and the right using the X and Y values like this, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to extend this out so we get even more of a blur in here. Note that there are different blurs in here, like this fast Gaussian probably gives you a little bit better result, right? But what we don't like about this is this isn't giving us colors in the background. It's just giving us this kind of like black and white view, right? Well, we can change that by adding a mix node right here. So we're just going to do a shift A. We're going to add a mix node. So when I drop that in there, notice how it's going to replace everything, which isn't necessarily what we want. We also want this going into the bottom, not the top. Um, but what we want instead is we don't want this to mix two things together. We want this to add them together. So when I click on add, notice how I get a different result here, but you can't really tell what it's doing until you do something other than white. So now if we look at this, Notice how I can adjust this to a different color right here, and we can use this to add a color to this image. So um, see how we can use this in order to create a gradient background in Blender. And then one other thing to note is if you wanted to, and I'm gonna go ahead and toggle off this viewer node right here, but if you wanted to, you could invert this ellipse mask. So what that would do is that would swap the blacks for the whites. So we're going to do a shift A, we're going to do an invert, but in that mask, that's going to swap this out so that where it was dark in the mask, now it's light and vice versa. And so you can use this in order to add gradient colors to your backgrounds in the compositor. All right, so then also, if you wanted to get like a vignette effect around the outside, instead of using a color like this, you could bring your color value down to something that's kind of black and white. And so you can see how you can use this in order to kind of get that vignette effect. And so one of the cool things about that is you could come in here and you could adjust this ellipse mask so that it's shorter right here. So if you make that effect shorter like this, then you can get this where it kind of goes all the way around your image right here. So you can use this in order to really quickly do that. You could also bring this width down a little bit more if you wanted to do that as well. So you can use that to simulate kind of a vignette effect in Blender. All right, so if you want to download some of the example files from my series on the compositor, you can check those out at the cgessentials.com slash compositor. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. I will link to my beginner compositor playlist on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.